Okay, go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Mark, one of the instructors here at Trans Canada College. Uh, we just finished an exterior uh, pre-trip. We're going to work our way into the interior uh, inspection of the vehicle. And uh, my cameraman, just pass me the phone, pass me the iPad. Okay, is uh, my student extraordinaire all the way from Rwanda, Steve, okay, who's going to be monitoring the old camera here for me while I put you guys through uh, the interior cab, and then we'll send it off to you guys so you guys can refer to it any time. So, back to you there, Mr. Cameraman. All right, guys. So, once again, we just completed... Uh, an exterior pre-trip of the uh, vehicle. Now we're moving to the inside of the truck and we do it very systematically and very methodically so that we don't miss anything. So as I entered the cab of the truck, one of the first things I'm gonna check is the very thing I sat on, which is my seat. So I'm gonna check it to ensure that it is secure. It is, I'm then gonna check my seat belt for its functionality and security. I'll also check down here for my tether. Make sure she's strapped to the floor. And from there, I then will proceed with the documentation to ensure that we have the correct vehicle. All right, and that the registration, insurance, and safety are up to date. So that's what a registration looks like. Your dates are up here for currency your valid safe um, insurance, and of course, the safety inspection right here. And this is pretty much the way we keep it here at the school. So there's no mistake on the legitimacy of the paperwork. It's all there and up to date. Okay, so once the paperwork is completed, all right, again, I'm moving step by step towards actually driving the truck. So therefore, uh, the vehicle is sitting on level ground. It's secured with chocks on the wheel, so she's not going to move anywhere. So my next step, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to actually start my truck. So I'll make sure that everything is in neutral. Brakes uh, would have been released, but anyway, I got them applied right now for now, so that's good. Turn the key on. I'm going to watch my instrumentation to ensure that all my um, my lights, uh, excess uh, emergency lights or whatever, uh, caution lights go out, clutch in, and start the truck. The truck is now started. I noticed my uh, oil pressure gauge moved on me, so that's functional. Uh, once again, the vehicle's secure. Now, when we were outside um, ex doing the exterior pre-trip, we played with some air systems on the air tanks, eh? your wet tanks, secondary and primary tanks. So we took some air out of there. We got to replace that air for when the time comes to do our air brake checks. So truck is started. I'm going to also release my brakes, push that yellow button in. That's the tractor brake and allow my air system here to build up, to replace the air. So I need at least a 90 to 100. Uh, to perform any air brake test. So while that's building up air, I will then carry on with the rest of the in cab. Okay? So I'm going to look above me to ensure that all my storage compartments, anything that's up there is secure. Nothing can come down on top of my head and interfere with the safe operation of the truck. I will therefore now check my windshield from the inside. There is no damage. So I'm going to make my wipers work and I'm going to make them squirt windshield washer fluid so they're functional okay so from there uh, there's no debris on the dash that can interfere with the safe operation of the truck nothing here between the seats that can roll forward or slide forward underneath the pedals okay being my brake and clutch and so on my fuel pedal and uh, that's all good from there I can now proceed with uh, my gauges on the instrument panel. Now, our, we've got a different fleet here. We got all freight liners, but we got brand new trucks. We got uh, 
slightly older vehicles and things are located a little bit differently but nonetheless they'll be there for you so I have my RPM gauge here and we see that that moves this uh, brand new uh, 2021 freight uh, liner Cascadia has got like a med like a menu system okay and it also has a speedometer on it and of course my um, normal speedometer gauge is there I have my air pressure gauge, both my primary and secondary. I have my water temperature gauge. I have my turbo gauge here, okay, that we can only check once we get rolling. This is my air suspension gauge for what the weight would be on over my drive wheels. Oil temperature, brake application, and trans temperature. When we get to your fan system, Okay, you must check all selections. So there it's on the defrost. So get that fan working. Check. To ensure it's working there. I've got both the defrost and at my feet. I've got at my feet. I've got at my face and feet. And then I've got it directly into my face. Those selections must be checked. Okay. Along the front of the dash, I have all my auxiliary switches here, okay? They are presently in the off position and would be on as required. Here you've got everything from dome lights, utility lights, traction control, so on. Again, they would only be on if you needed them. Well, there's the hazard light, the four-way, so give it a push. From the inside, they are working, okay? Down here, I've got my uh, suspension uh, height, and that's se selected on normal. I've got my fifth wheel lock, because we can move our fifth wheel on our uh, truck if we needed to for weight distribution. That's in the lock position. We don't want it moving. And then, of course, we have the uh, rear differential and the inner axle. We want those, obviously, in the unlocked position. This is the uh, brake, spring brake for the uh, truck, trailer, and our trailer hand valve which we'll get to once we get a trailer on okay from there i'm going to check for any excessive free play on the steering wheel i will ensure that my clutch has between one and two inches of free play my brake pedal is functioning and of course my foot throttle valve okay is all working my city horn my highway horn all functioning my mirrors on both sides are adjusted all right and uh, of course my headlights would be on I would do my right signal left signal and check our high and low beam from inside the truck to make sure that it is in fact working so unless I miss something now we're ready to commence our air brake system checks okay and the first one we're going to check is our air loss rate okay so to perform that one i'm going to lower my window i'm going to shut the truck off and i'm going to leave the key the ignition on all right so that i can read my gauges okay so i'm putting my window down so i can hear for any air leaks i'm monitoring my air gauge to see if the needles actually move so we're going to start off with the air loss rate. I'm going to apply the brakes and hold it. Initially on my air gauge, I should not lose any more than 8 to 12 PSI. Okay? Once the needle settles for one minute, this truck on its own by itself can only lose 3 PSI. A truck attached to one trailer is six, uh, 4 PSI and a truck attached to two trailers no more than six psi if those values are more the truck is deemed defective and out of service i'm going to record it report it vehicle remains out of service until repaired so uh the needles are stable one minute i'm using my truck clock you can use your wristwatch or your cell phone and for one minute i'm going to hold i'm going to listen and watch my air gauges for one minute to see if we got an air leak somewhere. So for time uh, sensitivity, 
We'll just pretend that the minute has gone by. The needles have not moved. I don't hear anything. Therefore, so far, we don't appear to have any kind of air leaks. I will then start my truck again. All right. Now, once again, as a reminder, when we started, we made sure that our brakes are released. We got a full complement of air that we can perform these tests with. All right, we're still secure with chocks, no problem. I'm now going to begin a series of tests. I'm going to check my compressor for the loading stage. I'm going to check when my audible alarm comes on. I'm going to then check for the automatic brake application or dynamite when the buttons come out. And that should happen between 45 and 20 PSI. All right. Then I'm going to check my air build-up rate between 50 and 90 in no more than three minutes. And then last but least, I'm going to check to see that my um, governor cuts out between 115 and 135. So let's commence. I'll put the window up here. we got the trucks next door. Boys are training over there. All right. So I'll stop. begin fanning. You don't have to push it too hard, just pump your brakes to about 80 PSI, pause, watch your air, keep doing that horn thing, watch your air gauge, now you're looking for movement up, okay, the needles are moving, which means now my compressor has gone to the loading stage, continue pumping now, so that's working. Audible alarm sounded at about 70 PSI, if it had a sounded at 55 PSI or lower, the truck would be deemed defective and out of service. I would record it, report it, vehicle's out of service until repaired. Now I'm checking for the automatic brake application. It should be just the yellow one coming out between 45 and 20. And there she goes, okay? And she did that at about 20 PSI, so it's within the range. So now my air gauge is going to start building up. When I get to 50 PSI, I will start timing. Okay. Now to do this, we need at least uh, six to 900 RPM. So it just takes a few seconds. We're approaching 50. Once again, I'll use the clock on the truck. So right now we're sitting at about uh, 131. Okay. All right, we're at 50, uh, 132. So now 50 to 90 in about three minutes, or it should take you no longer than three minutes. So as we go through, it's very, very important that you do this every day, every day. Make sure your truck is safe to drive. Do not leave the yard wherever you are and with an unsafe truck, all right? So we're getting there. We're up to about 70 PSI. Wave to our fellow truckers. We're almost there, almost there. So our air buildup took about a minute. So the everything system's working real well. Okay. So now our last one is our governor cutout, where you're going to hear that psh, that air expel through your air dryer, and that should all happen between 115 and 135. Continue to follow the air gauges. All right, she's coming up nice. She should be almost there.
There. We heard the air expel through the air dryer. That means the governor cut out on this vehicle here at about 125. So all the tests are successful. We have so far absolutely no issues with the uh, the vehicle. So before we actually do get out and get running, we still got to actually test the brakes. All right. So because I have no trailer on, instead of the traditional with a trailer four point brake check, I'm going to do a two point brake check, which is the truck uh, the truck spring brake, and I'm going to check the truck service brake. So. Uh, I'm going to step out and I would take my chocks off. So anytime you step out of the truck, I cannot emphasize enough, double check to make sure that those brakes are in fact applied. That means just a little pull on it, okay? Make sure they're applied. Then you would step out, grab your chocks that you've had your vehicle secured with, stow them underneath the bunk and come back in and perform the test. So the air brake test here for the spring brake is easy. All right, we've done all that. We got back in the seat, simple. Push the truck, since they're applied, push the clutch in, select your low gear, and then just release the clutch nice and easy until you feel the truck grab. That means the spring brakes on this thing are on the truck are actually working, okay? The next one we're gonna test is our foot. Okay, our service brake. So I'm gonna release the brake, keep my foot on the service brake, and just slowly release my clutch until I feel it grab. The truck should feel like it's gonna roll a little bit, and that means that they're grabbing, they're working, okay? And then of course, return ourselves back to uh, the uh, secured position with the vehicle in neutral, and of course, the brakes applied. So hopefully this has helped you guys. And uh, of course, if you have any questions during your training, uh, don't be shy to ask your instructors. Uh, all knowledgeable, get you through it, no problems. So anyway, thanks very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Right there, uh, Steve. <laughs>